Welcome back to Beaver Sports Talk on the Beaver Sports Radio Network. The Beavers getting ready not only, of course, for the Washington schools at home this weekend, the OSU women's basketball team wrapping up the regular season with a trip to Washington, beginning with the Washington Huskies Thursday night at 7 o'clock at Bank of America Arena. Then Saturday, a nationally televised game on Fox at 1 o'clock at Washington State. And it's a pleasure to welcome to talk about those games as well as uh, the senior salute this past weekend at Gill Coliseum. Oregon State women's basketball coach, LaVonda Wagner. Good evening, Coach. Mike, how are you? Doing fine, and thanks for joining us here tonight. First of all, before we get to the Washington schools, the the ovations, uh, the the post-game receptions, the pre-game ceremonies, all of that, I think the way the fans responded, the way uh, Beaver Nation responded showed how much, I know you've talked about how much you've loved coaching this team and the seniors and Casey and Ebony, but the fans really responded well to, to getting a chance to come see Casey at home. You know, and I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank our fans and the community for embracing this team. This has been a team that has really exceeded a lot of people's expectations and has really played hard every time they stepped on, on the floor and deserve a lot of that. And so I'm proud of them, and I'd also like to thank the community for embracing them and showing up and sending them out the right way. You know, in the, in the w- games this past weekend, you know, when, I, when we were getting reports down in, in Palo Alto about how things were going, it, it looked like this, it looked like <laughs> things and sounded like things were going well early. You're up nine. Take us through a little bit about the first part of that game and then eventually sort of how things progressed. You know, we played Stanford very tough at their place uh, earlier in the year, and the same thing happened in Gill. We came out, and, and it was a very close ball game all the way. And, in fact, uh, we led at the half uh, on the way off the floor. Uh, I didn't know this until I was already down into the locker room. seems like there was a technical foul called. Um, and so they came back. They got the two free throws. Okay, So they, that ties it. And then they got the ball back and they go ahead by two. And we still battled with that. And we did a great job. They went inside. They have 6-5, six, 6-3, five, six, six, five that they played against us. So they went inside. And they were able to score 52 points inside the paint on us uh, due to our size. We, we did the best that we could. We doubled. Uh, we triple teamed. We pressured the ball. They just went right over top of us. And so, you know, we, we fought that. And uh, they had an excellent game plan and they executed it you still you know Ashley Allen knocked down a three one of five that she hit on the night so you still have a lead in that game five six, about five and a half minutes into the second half so I mean to, to, to go as long with that type of team a top 10 team in the country having a lead that late were, were you proud of the way you, you know I'm played? very proud of the way my team played uh, we lost to them last year with seniors by an average of 30 points every time we played them and uh, they really had to they have to play and they make that statement their staff said when we play against Oregon State now we have to come to play it's just not one of those gimmies and in fact their best player their all-american was not dressed in the first half in the second half when they came back up into the floor she was suited up and they actually put her on the floor and she hit a huge three-point shot very deep and it really gave them some inspiration and that's kind of when they begin to separate from us and that was the only shot that Candace made from what I understand but it was more of an emotional lift that here she is we're okay again but right. I'm sure the coach didn't want to do it but felt compelled to well you know absolutely and that's a credit to, to our players and, and what they do on the floor and how hard that they work and you know when you're changing a culture it takes some time but this is a team that a year ago they were mostly most of these kids were in high school and to come in and play the way they've played all year and to be in the game until the very end and have opportunity to close it out that's what's important you know obviously I'm a coach and I'm very competitive so Obviously, I'd like to, to have more of uh, a, a, a winning record. I won't say that. But, you know, I just keep being positive with them and just keep teaching and keep putting them in positions where they can get better. Every single day we talk about we need to get better. We break down the film. We talk about, okay, we broke down here. Why did that occur? Where did that pass come from? What were we looking for? And, you know, I'm beginning to ask them to tell me instead of me always giving them the answer because that's part of the problem, I think, is once we make every read for them and they're in the position to do that, they're not really sure. They're looking over there, you know, what do I do now? If you have any questions or comments for Coach Wagner tonight or any thoughts you'd like to share about uh, Casey's career, uh, just as a message as a Beaver fan, feel free to give us a call on the Dutch Bros Sports Line toll-free, 877-600-6433, 877-600-6433. I want to ask you about a couple. I've mentioned Ashley Allen's five yes. threes. 
What were those a function of, Coach? I mean, is that, again, growth in her game, the way her teammates <laughs> were setting Let's her up? Let's just say or? I've been having a conversation with her about her three-point shooting percentage for a very long okay. time. And as she was uh, someone who was shooting the ball for us but wasn't shooting it very well, she was actually shooting 19% from the three-point line, and we needed more from her. So conversations, working on it every single day. And she's played very well against Stanford both times when we played them, so she had her confidence. And, you know, she shot 50% from the three-point line. We were six for 11 at the half, which is very, very big for us. And ended up 9 for 19 as a team, which is a, a solid performance no matter how. I mean, that's a great performance. Absolutely. Beyond, you'll take that any time. Absolutely. That's a great performance. And one other player who had her first career double-double, uh, Julie Futch, mm-hmm. against Stanford. Tell us a little bit about how her game has developed and, and what you saw going on against she Stanford. Seems, she seems to be a lot more confident and comfortable on the floor. We're playing her at the two spot uh, just to come in, and she can knock down a shot if she's open. And the thing I like about her is she has the ability to rebound. And I thought it was very interesting that uh, one of our smallest players in our program uh, had ten rebounds, and eight of them were on the offensive mm-hmm. end, which means she gave us eight extra possessions mm-hmm. uh, and opportunities to score so that was really good to see and she took some shots and she made those and she's got to continue to do that for us as we close out the season in the case of her grabbing eight offensive boards getting 10 rebounds but the offensive boards in particular and you know for all the the fine players you've coached is rebounding mostly about desire and effort or is it a combination of that and just a knack, I, an understanding of angles and where the ball's going to end up. I mean, Well, you know, being the nation's leading rebounder my senior year in college, a lot of it has to do with heart and hustle, but a lot of it, too, is understanding the flight of the ball, where it's going to come to, and just really going after it. And I think with her, uh, our post players were really trying to box out their post players, and the ball came off long, and she just went and grabbed it, and off we were. And that's what we need. We need more of that. We need a good rebounding guard, and, you know, she can help us with that. We will take a quick break. If you have any questions or comments for Coach Wagner tonight, 877-600-6433. The Dutch Bros Sports Line from McMenamin's on Monroe on the Beaver Sports Radio Network. Here's the sound. Welcome back, Beaver Sports Talk on the Beaver Sports Radio Network. Mike Parker joined by OSU women's basketball coach LaVonda Wagner again. The schedule this weekend, the Beavers at Washington, 7 o'clock Thursday night, and then Saturday on Fox Sports Net, 1 o'clock, nationally televised game against Washington State. And we'll talk about those games in a moment. But before we leave off this past weekend, Coach, to have a 
senior night, you know, we've already touched a little bit on the community embracing this team and the seniors. But for Casey to go out and get 25 points in her last home game, 9 of 16 from the field, pretty fitting way for her to end her Gill Coliseum career. Well, she didn't want her, her uh, career in Gill to end because she played 50 minutes. And uh, Casey Nash and Mercedes Fox Griffin played 50 minutes on that floor that night. And that's no one, no, nobody else has done that. And, you know, we didn't come up with a win on that game, but what a tremendous game to watch. And I couldn't be prouder of my team. And, and in the end, their players made uh, plays and we didn't and were able to score. And, you know, their coach said that. She said, hey, what, you, what, what this team is doing is phenomenal and in the end you know my kids made plays and, and yours didn't but it, what a great game and another another very good and ranked team cal number 22 in the country coming in so it was a game that had 15 ties nine lead changes back and forth down the stretch really compelling game very very competitive game uh they have a great uh post game and they have two of the most outstanding post uh players in the conference and we had to guard them and we did a pretty good job for about 40 minutes the last 10 minutes uh, we, we struggled and they just went right over top of us and inside uh you know and they had a senior that who doesn't normally shoot three point shots but she knocked down a three and that really put the dagger in us a little bit and and i think with us that we're competing with people we're scaring people and i'm like you know what guys i am tired of scaring people it's time for us to beat people and you know they just have to learn how to do that and we'll talk about uh what it will take to do that twice this weekend here in a moment with uh, coach wagner again if you have any questions or comments Uh, for the coach or just about the team uh, that you'd like to share with us tonight it's toll free on the dutch bros sports line at 877-600-6433 877-600-6433 one final statistical note on casey and she still can add of course to these totals uh, this weekend in the pac-10 tournament one of six players just one of six in the history of Oregon State women's basketball, 1,000 points, mm-hmm. 650 rebounds. That's a good combo. Huh? That's a very good combo. And to her credit, you know, she has to take a lot of shots for us, and we run her off a lot of screens. And she has to, you know, a lot of times guard their best post player, and, and she has to rebound the basketball and make her free throws. So she's having to play 40 hard minutes. We have three players uh, that lead the Pac-10 in, in minutes played, and obviously she's one of them. And, you know, these kids have just really given everything they had. You know, speaking of uh, giving everything they have, when I when I look at your overall season, it's a fine line. You know, in, in a lot of these games, it's depressing. You know, it, <laughs> it may be that, coach, but you also, it's such a fine line. I mean, yeah. I've looked back; you've had ten losses by less than ten points, five losses by less than five points. Mm-hmm. You come off a double overtime heartbreaker this past weekend. And while it may be depressing on one level, is it also encouraging to know you're young, you won't be as young next year, and right. some of these things could swing the other Well, way. we'll be very much young. We'll be young again. The, the freshmen will be sophomores, but we got another big freshman class coming in. But if you look at what these young women have done, I mean, that's absolutely right. We've lost a lot of close, close games, and a lot of them on the last second shot. And it's phenomenal because, like I said before, these young women are a year removed from high school. And there's nobody else in the country that are depending on five freshmen in a power conference like we're doing and nobody else in the country that has nine players and six to seven play and a lot of them play 40 minutes and you know I just my hats off to them I I really respect them I thank them for what they're doing for this program and I really I thank them for what they've done done to this community and Oregon State. One of those uh, tough laws we'll take a final break and we'll come back and, and talk about Washington because that's right there in what we're talking about but that was two months ago now so I'm curious to know you know, two months later when you go play the dogs again, the things you'll remember from the last time against them and hoping to, you know, to get over that hump right. this weekend in Seattle. So we'll talk about Washington, which is up first Thursday night at 7, Washington State, Saturday at 1. We'll take a final break with uh, Coach Wagner and come back with more. It's Beaver Sports Talk from McMenamins on Monroe. Thanks for joining us on the Beaver Sports Radio Network.
Welcome back. Our last couple of minutes with Oregon State women's basketball coach LaVonda Wagner. It has been a long time, Coach, two months since you've played these Washington schools. A lot's happened in two months, hasn't it? Uh, well, we're not the same team. I think I feel like we're a much better team now than we were on December, you know, the 21st and the 23rd. And, you know, we turned the ball over a lot that weekend against both those teams. We had 53 turnovers between both those games and 80 minutes of basketball. And that's when we started doing possession-by-possession possession game plans. And that really helped us because we, we narrowed the game. We shortened the possession. They didn't have to think so far ahead. And we also said we're not a team that can score a lot in transition. We're a half-court team. We've got to take their out of the ball. We've got to slow it down. We've got to make them play in the half-court and execute our screens and run our stuff so that we can score. And these kids now understand that. And we know we have to rebound to take away other people's transition games. And so in that regard, too, I mean, to, to have sustained those two games two months ago, too many turnovers, but it must be a point of, of pride to look back now and see how far you've come from that and the chances of going up and getting both of those games right, you probably feel a lot better about You know, I do feel a lot better. Washington will be tough at home. Uh, this is their last weekend at home. They have seven seniors. They're the exact opposite of what we are. We're very, very young, and they're, and they're seasoned, and they understand how to play. They know how to make cuts. They know how to defend people inside, and some of the things that they did to Judy Lomax just wasn't fair. I mean, they just, they just messed around with her and played with her, and she had no idea. You know, so that and then, you know, Washington State is a team that hasn't won a game since they beat us uh, on December 21st. And the thing about that is, you know, we, we weren't prepared. We, we were scared to death about Pac-10 basketball. You know, if, and if Judy, who has a better idea now, but if I'm not mistaken, she had 18 points and 14 rebounds in that game. She did, so. and she should have had 28 points and 28 <laughs> rebounds as far as I'm concerned. Well, maybe that's coming up Thursday night then. We hope so. Thursday at 7, the Washington Huskies, and then a television game Saturday, 1 o'clock on Fox. Coach, thanks for joining Thank us you. as always. Good luck this weekend Thank up north. Coach Wagner joining us tonight on Beaver Sports Talk. We look forward to seeing all of you at Gill Thursday night. The first 1,000 fans will get those rally towels. We'll be on the air at 5.30. Remember all the stuff on Fox beginning at 5. And a, bi a big hour of uh, Beaver's pregame stuff before the tip-off at 6.05. For Jay John and Coach Wagner, this is Mike Parker. Thanks for joining us on the Beaver Sports Radio Network.